Hey, hey, you're on the garage with Easy Jeezy. I thought I'd make a video today about pulleys. It uh, will keep my overactive mind busy since we've all got a little time off on our hands here. And I thought maybe I'd kill two birds with one stone and entertain you as well. The subject that we're going to be talking about today are these uh, pulleys. Now, I mentioned in my other video that I have this equalizer pulley. This is a six pound pulley. It's sand sealed and I have it on my sand car. It didn't come with one of these and if you're running a stock style engine with totally stock engine there's no need for you to put one of these things on your car. Um, he used to have a sales catalog and it had a lot of information in it and you had to buy them. I made an order many years ago back in the 80s and, and let me just tell you what he had to say say about it first the stock engine when never turned over 4400 rpm with a stock flywheel has little need for this device or our equalizer pulley they are unable to generate the conditions this eliminates in the early 60s we started to lighten the flywheel and increase the performance and rpm range of the engines and either of these things pounded the cases out Adding of weight is nothing new in automotive applications. Chevy, Ford, and many cars install a harmonic balancer dampener on the nose end of the crankshaft to absorb some of the engine's harmonic vibrations. We originally designed this for our drag race cars to have more weight on the pulley end of the crankshaft to help equalize weight on both ends of the crankshaft. It stopped crankshaft twist, aided the drag race cars as they left the starting line harder. The Berg equalizers are extremely popular for sand drag, second gear starts, and dune running. Offered in two sizes for high performance street cars or engines turning over 6,000 RPM. One piece solid steel construction assures concentricity and strength. Uh, the stock size, like I showed you on my car, is six and a quarter pound. And having steel versus aluminum means that you're Pulley's going to last longer, your belt life lasts longer, and so on and so forth. And they made them in uh, a lot of different shapes and sizes, and we're going to take a little closer look at that. So, this is not something that I thought of. It wasn't original on me. A lot of smarter people out there <laughs> than me, but when I first got in these stand cars, I got so in love with these Volkswagen engines and I decided I wanted to build a 2110 engine because that appeared to be the favorite engine of Gene Berg and I became a big follower of him because he produced this technical information. And here's uh, this Gene Berg equalizer pulley. It's a sat outside on sand cars and tub buggies and been in all my different cars over the years and it still has a nice uh, fit and finish. Uh, it's got some corrosion on here and they have a nice uh, etched degree wheel that is bonded to that. It stayed intact and, and you can still read it after over 25 years of being on there and uh, it works great. You can see right here this is kind of a, a machine fit. I don't know if it's exactly tapered, but once you get the bolt off, there's a thick lock washer, a uh, wave washer underneath that. They're generally torqued between, I think the book calls out, between 32 and 35 pounds. And you'll just have to put the car in gear or put the emergency brake on or have somebody sitting in the car with that, that on to crack that bolt loose and then you're going to have to come up with something to uh, reach in there. I, I came up with this many years ago. Uh, it fit on the back. I had the bolt started in the threads and I put a little socket uh, in behind it and I stuffed this behind through the holes so, and it was real difficult to get the nuts on in the back and then I turned it down a little at a time then I would have to take it all apart, loosen it up because this thing, it, it will fight you all the way off uh, is that's all I'm gonna say the aluminum ones you may find that you continually have a problem with the bolt coming loose and there's probably no way it's not really a matter of lock tightening the bolt in it's that it's aluminum and it's gonna expand at a different rate expand and contract get tight and loose tight and loose and 
it being in an engine compartment, I think it just kind of, kind of compounds the problem. Although the, the heat is, because of this good contact, it's going to transfer through the surface, the contacting surface right here, and aluminum is just going to absorb that heat much quicker. So you've got movement going on. You've got your oil return groove here. It kind of looks like a left-hand thread. Everybody knows that the uh, engine crankshaft turns clockwise when you're standing behind the car. And so the, the oil return groove, and then you've got this little deflector type thing here. So that's kind of, uh, and even just putting it in by hand, you can, you can tell there's some kind of a, kind of a taper there. And none of these, uh, the Gene Berg one, I must say, he made a great, effort to make it as good as stock and I still have it on mine you know one of my engines and I wished I'd have bought more of them but these aftermarket ones MP still got them I've seen them for like a hundred dollars for the steel ones aluminum ones will run anywhere from 39 to 70 bucks depending on what kind you want here's a cast aluminum sand sealed pulley and this is about the same weight as the stock if you're off-roading and going through slow, rocky uh, courses and things, then it helps to have a heavy rotating mass. Uh, a light and flywheel and ultralight everything can be an aggravation and create uh, stalls that uh, are annoying. And the heavier mass kind of helps the rotation of that. Another uh, side point is that if you, everything is lightened and your engine revs up and down real quick, that when you're trying to shift your car and you're going down the drag strip full out and you're grabbing gears with a close ratio transmission, that, that responsiveness allows those gears to engage. Now, many times drag racers use crash boxes that don't even have synchros in them, but uh, I'm sticking to like street type design here. So if you have a high rev and fast engine and you want to go shifting real fast through the gears, the, 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 it's easier on your synchronizer clutches in your transmission when you have the lighter rotating mass. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, okay, you can still get, <clears throat> and they give you these options when you order them, you can get the aluminum pulley with the uh, oil return groove cut in the back and I want you to notice here which is problems with these things getting loose and tight now these both have the oil return groove here's a stock seal one you can look at the th thickness you can see the thickness is about the same on this one now if you come over to this one all of a sudden it gets it gets real thin see how much it, thinner it is here than it is on this one so when you're tightening that nut down I don't know, <clears throat> you don't want to get in a situation where you're deforming things. And another caution that I want to tell you about, <clears throat> all engines of this nature have to have a certain amount of end play at the end of the crankshaft. You adjust that with the shims on the flywheel end against the thrust washer. Every time you push in the clutch, you're putting pressure against that thrust bearing and things are spinning back there and you're forcing things back and forth. These engines need room to expand and contract with temperature and they need to room to wiggle. There's a lot of wiggling going on inside these darn engines whether you understand it or not. Um, I don't know, this engine's an old one that's kind of worn out. I could just hear that, I don't know if you can hear it. That's got a lot, but this engine is wore out. It needs a, it's gonna need a rebuild for sure. <clears throat> now, you can see this. Here's a, I don't know why, I wasn't even looking for that. This is a spacer, looks to me like, and that is to help with your pulley alignment. I want you, regardless of what you do with these pulleys, to check it before, check that end play, doesn't matter if it's out of spec or not. If your engine's old, it's probably going to be out of spec. If it's not smoking and you, it's got enough power and you want to drive it that way, go for it. But I want you to be sure that when you finish this project that you still have that end play in there at the end because what will happen if you don't do this right, here's a 
look at look at the difference here. This is this is a nice seal that came out of this uh, desert race car here, and you can see where there wasn't any contact. The seal is inside here. It's not against the back. And look how somebody put this in there. It's totally got destroyed. Either there was so much in play in there that it was moving back and forth, but it gouged out the back of the pulley. And, you know, we stand these things up and do wheelies and things with them. That's why all the marks are probably gone off this one. And you can see where file marks were put in here at top dead center, bottom dead center, 10 degrees, 34 degrees. I don't recollect where this came from. It, it might have been my screw up. Uh, I've been known to make a mistake. Uh, I think that was one of three. <laughs> now, when you buy one of these things new, what they'll do sometimes is they'll give you a spacer. You use the spacer to avoid this. It goes over the crankshaft and up against that shoulder in the back here. <clears throat> And the base of your pulley right here is going to going to go in that far where it's going to make contact back here. But you don't want the the uh, uh, the sand seal only is contacting the case. It doesn't go all the way in the back. It's just just being held there. We put a little pookie on it, and it's a friction fit. And some of them go in easy, some of them go in a little bit harder. But you may need to put this in first up against here to move the whole pulley back out. So when you're done, you still have that amount of free play. You're going to have to mess with it. A lot of times I end up with extra parts because there's choices and I don't know what to buy. And I hate buying things twice. But you can see all over my garage how I have all this new stuff. And it's, it's either extra parts that I bought two of them because I knew I wanted it. Or sometimes it, it ends up because I made a mistake and ordered the wrong thing and it wasn't for, for what I thought I was ordering. Here's a, a cast aluminum pulley that's stiff enough and strong enough <clears throat> that you can actually put the puller on the outside and pull it off. <clears throat> and I have one of these on my... Uh, tub buggy, the 1776 we built together last year, the 1776 single port, uh, and it was all balanced to that engine, so I went ahead and uh, left that on there, even though it's being driven mostly on the street. So you've got, this is probably just a scotch heavier than the stock stamp steel one here. Other option on this pulley, this is a a power pulley that came with this car in a goodie box and you can see how much smaller diameter that is and Gene Berg has something to say about that technical information about stock or power size a good question the stock size should be ran all except race applications that will be kept under 6000 rpm when you accelerate above the fan is not going to pump any more and the power to run it goes up to a point that the belt will slip. If allowed to slip, it will turn over and other times flies off. When this occurs, it means you are beyond the RPM limit of the fan efficiency and need to use a power size pulley. They are designed to cool a high RPM engine and allow the fan to work best in the 4,000 to 8,000 RPM range. So, I hope that made sense. I hope all my videos make sense to somebody and give you tips. Um, there's a way to correct some of the loss in that fan speed because I don't turn 6,000 RPM. I often am up in the 4,000 RPM range and to get back some of that fan speed that I've lost with the power pulley, you can either use an old pulley or you can go to uh, a Porsche 356 pulley and that's what these this is right here and here's a stock size chrome pulley that's junk and you can see that this is a smaller diameter now the depth that your belt rides inside the belt groove here makes a difference when you have a new belt as your belt gets old and stretches 
your the, it's going farther out to the outside of this and that is actually slowing down your fan it's not by that by the rpm but in extreme situations 95 degree weather you're going down the highway at trying to keep up with the traffic that's now goes down the highway nowadays these little subtle things can make a big difference enough of a difference that you're not going to be vapor locked onto the side of the road with a melting engine so um, you could if you got a different belt you could speed your fan up at the throughout the power range by putting this smaller pulley on the top it's all opposite when you're doing it on the bottom because there's the ratio between the large and the small I don't know how to explain that but ask your mom <laughs> she might be able to explain it if you do go to this the power pulley on the bottom only you would have to put a smaller belt on here and that's the number for that so I think we've covered enough things right here for this video and I hope it really helps you guys and I I hope you're having a good day and uh, as always please uh, give me a thumbs up thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy out